Hey everyone, this is Elisha. Common Tonalities is a project that explores Southeast Asian tuning systems and skills through the use of music technology. I had the opportunity to participate alongside 19 other amazing artists with workshops led by Kaya Malami to dive in further and understand these different systems and to see if we can create something new out of utilizing ideas that don't usually come from your usual 12 to equal temperament system. For those who don't know, the song that you hear on radio and when you see your typical piano roll on a keyboard, those use the 12 to equal temperament system. And yes, there are other systems out there and it was our aim to see what we can create using these systems. So ultimately, at the end of the project, 20 new works were created with this concept in mind and it was compiled into one big album. So I want to talk about the song that I composed for this project. It's titled Bayutara and it has its humble beginnings from this instrument. It goes by many names and it's found in various cultures across the region. A recurring characteristic is that it consists of a series of small tuned gongs. The tuning, however, varies depending on which culture it is used in. This particular variation is quite commonly found in the indigenous groups from northern Borneo, and it has a very peculiar tuning to it. I'm not an expert in this, so correct me if I'm wrong, but no two guling tangans of this type has similar tuning systems or a specific scale that is used. So right off the bat, it doesn't sound like anything you hear in the radio nowadays. So for one, it only has six notes to work with and the last three higher notes are just the octaves of the first three lower notes. Next, we're gonna analyze these gongs and load up the samples into Melodyne. So the cool thing about Melodyne is that it doesn't just tune vocals, which is probably the most popular way of using it, but it also has this function where it'll detect the frequencies of the audio samples you load into it, and you can create your own scales from it. So over here, these blobs represent the audio samples of the gulintangan that I recorded. So actually I cleaned up this session quite a lot so it's easier to see where the notes are. So right down here I've decided that this lowest note will be the tonic for the new scale that I am creating. And then right next to it is a column of Roman numerals so it's easier to see the scale in a linear form. So of course the tonic is the first and then this is gonna be the second one third so on and so forth and right next to it is also a column where you can check how many cents each of these notes are away from the tonic which is designated zero so with this information we next go to lima which is a browser-based tool which you can input these numbers to get a better visual and auditory understanding of the tuning you're working on and this is how it sounds like So it's a very simple sound. I feel like it helps a lot because the guling tangan itself, there's a lot of overtones happening. This really helps me visually and also more importantly, listen to what the notes actually sound like. And you can adjust it by ear as well because ultimately, even though the numbers are there, you would like to kind of like trust your ears a bit more as well. So kind of have to have this good balance of both. And once you're happy with it, Lima also has this feature where you can download uh, this information in the form of scalar files which are essential to force feed your synthesizers to leave the typical 12 tone equal temperament system and accommodate to whatever tuning information you load into them. So now we're looking at the actual project file for Ayutara. 
So as you can see, there's nothing much going on. 61 tracks. I didn't want to be too specific with like layering ideas and just creating texture. I was really more focused on trying to assimilate myself with just working with this new system, a new idea and a new concept overall. So the next step was essentially just pulling up whatever synthesizer that I have and just loading up the scalar files into it. Like for example, over here, it's set to Dusun Guling Tangan, which is the scale that I labeled the Guling Tangan scale that I sampled. So then you can get the scale of the Guling Tangan that I sampled. You can just create chords. So now our tool is ready. Next is getting around this new approach to this tuning. So for me, the biggest challenge was to actually make sense of the tuning. One lead that I had was that there's some form of cold tone scale-ish vibe to it. So for one, I needed to know how to use these notes to kind of create some form of tension and resolution to the harmony. Second, I needed to create hooks that kind of make sense with something sounding so alien. Thirdly, I decided to dig my own grave and construct a bass solo from this tuning. Though with the help with the fretless bass, I was able to kind of reach the microtonal notes. It was still a challenge because it meant that I had to intentionally play out of tune. I really had to abandon a lot of what I learned and primarily focus on what felt like a tension and a resolution, what felt like a good sounding hook, and of course, what felt like a well-developed bass solo. So to kick things off, let's just go through the tracks that I have for this song. The first group of tracks, we have the vocals, color in light blue, and then in darker shade of blue, we have the guling tangans. And I have a dedicated track just for the bass solo. And then I have a group of tracks colored pink. These are all my synth tracks. And then I have three separate tracks for the piano, each playing a dedicated role. We'll go through that later. And then I have one track just for the upright bass. Basically, this is the bassline element for the entirety of the song, more or less. And then last but not least, I have a group of tracks colored orange. These are all my percussive elements. So first off, let's start with the vocals. It's just a mix of oohs and ahs and a's to kind of create a texture and at the same time to create a tangible hook of some sorts on top of whatever that's playing down here. <laughs> Now the process with recording this was me trying to get as close to the scale as possible. Then once I'm happy with my take, then I pull up Melodyne again. Since I have the tuning information, I can adjust them accordingly. And at the same time, I listen to the other tracks, the synth tracks specifically because they are using that specific tuning. So I kind of lined it up with the tracks and once I'm happy with how it lines up, then I leave it as such. So it took a while and I did that with all the tracks here so that it doesn't sound out of tune. Uh, this one I tried to do some like rhythmic uh, singing to double it with the Kuling Tangan which we're gonna be hearing later. So it sounds like this. It's just there to kind of add a bit more texture to the guling tangan and making sure that the part doesn't sound like just the guling tangan. And there's a voice choir here which is also tuned to the scale. Yeah. Next, I want to go through the... I would divide it into two parts. The first part is actual guling tangan playing. I was trying to figure out some sort of like a crossover contemporary traditional style of hook for this particular section because it kind of needs something like that. So I ended up with something like this. Oh, 
that's the first part. Same thing as with this one. This is the part that's doubling with the vocals. So if you have it with the vocals, sounds pretty interesting. Then the other going on parts are cut up sounds to kind of create this inhuman, inorganic effect to the sound. I think it's pretty cool. It gives this very unique rhythmic uh, characteristic to the going on parts. Next, let's go through the synth parts. Just to make things quick, I'll divide the synth parts into two sections. The first section is treating the synth parts as more of a world building tool, as a gel to combine everything together. So there's nothing much going on here besides it trying to copy whatever the piano is playing or trying to support the other instruments in its own way. So you hear a lot of just single notes being played. Or something like this for the transition parts. I play chords on the synth parts as well, so you get interesting harmonies. This is one of many things that I came up with that fits my idea of attention and the resolution. This is very foreign territory for me, so it took a while for me to decide what feels like a tension, what feels like a resolution. Then the other role for some of the other synths were to kind of like build hooks. And then I tried to be a bit more rhythmic with my synth ideas as well. So you get this sound playing at the back at this one part of the song. And then just to develop things further at the end, I kind of built up the dynamics even more by just adding a lot more synths. Specifically, I kind of like this two synths and I sort of faded it in just to slowly build everything up till the very end of the song. It just sounds so cool. <laughs> so the next part that I want to go through are the piano parts, which is where this track started. Because I was trying so hard to kind of make sense of the harmony and the melody and the scales that I'm using. I started with a single note to kind of establish a tonic. Then over here, I kind of use this part to just double the hook part of this song. Alongside the guling tangan, the vocals, and the synths. Then at the end, it joined everything else to establish a bit more color and texture to the harmony. Then the next part is the chord part, if you may say. So I didn't really have any constructive process in trying to understand the harmony that's going on. It was just me trying to understand texture and to really decide upon myself what sounds dissonant, what sounds less dissonant. So I kind of use that as like a measuring tape, as a gauge to decide my tension and resolution movement between the chords. And then it resolves. 
it's a very primal process but I feel like it's a, an eye-opening one and it really humbles me to really rely on my ears and my intuition. I kind of explored on that concept a bit more and be a bit more daring as the song goes by. So overall, once I got the piano part down, I was a bit more confident with the other instruments in this track. Next is the upright part. So I focused more on the rhythmic side of things. So as a bass player, I was thinking how can I rhythmically complement the notes, the harmony, the chords that's playing in the track. Some parts is pretty simple, like at the earlier part, it's just there to kind of contribute to the lower end of the frequency. Just to build it up after that continuous tonic note. And then when the chorus part comes in, I say chorus, then it gets a bit more active. It's just there to support the chords. I feel like with how complex and saturated the harmony is, I just want the bass there to generally contribute to the lower end of the frequency. And if any, just keep the groove going with short notes and long notes and mixing everything up. And then it gets a bit more crazier at the end alongside with everything else. Yeah, that's pretty much about it with the upright bass. Last but not least are the percussions. So the first thing is this big boomer thing. It's basically like a really huge low frequency hit. Sounds like this. It's something that you kind of feel rather than hear. And then I have this other track. This really processed snare. Again, same thing, simple rhythms, just to kind of give a really consistent drive. I layer in another sound with the initial snare sound to just give it a bit more push towards the end of the song. So together it sounds like this. At the very end of the song, I just want to give the song a final push. So I included a shaker here as well. Just to give a high end texture to everything. Same idea with the cowbells as well. Next are the bongos. And I added a bit of a delay there because give it an extra inorganic effect to the bongo sounds. I bandpass the delay so that it kind of has this lo-fi tail to it. Kind of gives an illusion that there's another tiny instrument at the back, like some marbles being shaken together in a small bag. So I feel like that kind of gives it a really fun texture as well, like a bonus texture. And now for the toms, really not much. I just really want them to really help drive everything down. I have this heavily processed cymbal scrape for transition purposes only. I feel like it's pretty cool and because there's a tone to that, I think there's a tone to it. I tried to tune it as close as possible to the Guling Tangan's tuning. And I think the texture that comes out of it is pretty interesting to listen to. Heavily processed cymbal scrapes instead of just cymbal washes can bring out uh, interesting qualities with transition parts. So I have another track here which is basically a loop of taiko sticks hitting the rims. I have a collection of cymbal hits. 
I believe these are Chinese symbols. Or like Chinese orchestras. I decided to use Chinese symbols instead of regular symbols because again, I feel like regular symbols just feels too predictable and I don't really like the idea of having predictability with this track. And then I have this sound here, kind of like a very mallet-ish tune percussion sound to it. Some of these parts are basically doubling whatever that's happening on top. Now I have this patch here. Again, it's just there to add texture. Of course, I tuned this to the Guling Tang tuning as well. And then over here, I have symbols. Overall giving the song a bit of a drive on the higher frequency. And then the next thing is this reverse cymbal swell. And then there's the kick here, nothing much. And finally the hi-hat. Now we come to the bass solo, which is probably the second hardest thing that I needed to work on for this song. I really had to take my time to accommodate myself in going away from the thought of whether I'm in tune or not. And then I faced the issue of how am I gonna write a solo that is tangible, that has story, that has development and how do I present that in a way that people understand what I'm trying to deliver? But eventually, I got through and then I was happy with this solo and this is how it sounds like. stop there it really gives me this sense of appreciation to this really unique system to this really unique scale and I think just playing the scale that I'm learning through an instrument that I'm comfortable with really gives me a different perspective it really felt like I was learning music from scratch. It is a pretty rewarding experience but yeah that's all for the bass solo. So overall I kind of wanted to find a balance to this piece. Some sort of medium to reach out to normal listeners and to kind of like introduce a different approach to music making. I didn't want to stray too far from the foundational tuning and scale but at the same time I didn't want it to kind of like sound too foreign. So generally speaking I wanted to work on a song that challenges me fundamentally as a musician but at the same time doesn't leave your everyday listeners with complicated feelings and thoughts once they hear it. Personally, it's a first for me being in this environment surrounded by different artists with varying disciplines. There's just so much saturation of information going around and I honestly have no idea where to start when it comes to what I've learned throughout the project. It definitely opened up my mind to explore what's possible through a different angle and perspective, which personally, it's something I wholeheartedly enjoy. Just the idea of pushing boundaries and see what happens when we try out new things. I just want to say thank you to the Nusa Sonic team for giving me this opportunity. I also want to say thank you to Khayam Alami for such mind-opening sessions. And last but not least, I just want to say thank you to the other participants as well for their music and also their wealth of information from music cultures that are generally foreign to me. Again, do check out Bayutara and don't forget to listen to the other tracks in the compilation as well. No two tracks are even remotely similar to each other. So it's definitely a trip to listen to everything in one go. And I do highly recommend for you to listen to everything in one go to get the full experience of what we have to offer in this compilation. 
The link to the compilation is in the description box below as well as links to social medias. Thank you so much everyone. I will see you next time. Thank you.